Hey family, welcome to The Hub. goodness y'all we made it to a new year if you're listening to this that means you made it into 2022 oh snap happy new year girlfriend i am so so happy that you made it into a brand new year last year that was bananas and now i am grateful to have made it into this new year and i am grateful for my health and being able to breathe for my finances, for my family, for my future, and for my all of y'all, y'all, my fans, right? So I just want to say thank you. Thank you to Karen Hunter and Donica for pouring into me and helping to make this podcast happen week after week, month after month, year after year. We have not skipped a beat, okay? And I can't, I can't say it was all on me. I have a whole team that that helps to make this happen. So I just want to say thank you. Christina, Donica, Karen, all of y'all, women unite. You know what I'm saying? We got a multicultural team, which is so exciting, right? Um, For this first episode of the year, I want to recap last year. 10 best episodes, the episodes that you guys said that you loved, loved, okay? And if I'm missing one, let me know. What's the episode that you absolutely loved? Which episode poured into your heart? Go ahead, take a listen, tune in, and don't forget to subscribe. We were having breakfast the other day and I just wanted to to bring out my camera and my recorder and <laughs> to, to, to just record some of the insight that you were sharing at breakfast. And I thought it was important to bring you here to the show because there's so many professional women that are frustrated with dating and what dating looks like. And as a grown man as yourself, I'd, I'd just love to take it back, right? Before engaged and back to the dating scene, you know, like when you were dating, um, what, did that, what did that look like for you? Because especially dating apps, I know ladies are over it, right? Like they are done with the dating app. It's all these crazy people. So what was your mindset when getting on a dating app? Were you there long? Did you do a lot of swiping? Did you have a routine? All the things, go ahead. Um, For me, using a dating app was the most efficient. Um, It's the opportunity where I can meet the most amount of women. Uh, I remember one time I had a, a sister ask me, you know, why would she, why would you use a dating app? Mm-hmm. And the example I gave her was if I was in a nightclub and I'm walking around the room and I'm talking to like various women, at some point, these women are going to see me talking to other women and they're probably going to be like, no, I'm not going to talk to him because I see you moving around the room. Whereas when you're dealing with a dating app, you are able to reach out to Uh, numerous women. I think at the most I would probably do would be maybe five or seven. Um, And you're just pretty much waiting to see whether or not somebody's going to respond. And if they do, I would just go ahead and, you know, ask basic questions like, hey, how's you doing? How's your day? Uh, What do you do for a living? Um, At times it can be a little um, perplexing because you're dealing with multiple women and you're having multiple very uh, conversations. Oh sometimes, man, keeping track. Exactly. exactly. Um, sometimes you're texting women, sometimes you're actually doing FaceTime, sometimes you're on the phone with women. And you ha- and the difficulty for me was trying to remember the conversation. Certain things that I've told one particular sister about my life is like, wait a minute, did I tell this sister over here? Hey, um, and sometimes, Every now and again, a sister would reference something and I'd be like, yeah, you told me that. And she'd be like, no, I didn't. And then I'd be like, oh yeah, that's right. That was someone else. (laughs) That was someone else. So that happens. And overall, it was okay. Um, I initially thought starting the process, you know, if I met 10 women, I figured minimum there were three that I could work with. And when I say work with, meaning I could acquiesce with, I could augment. I uh, didn't need them to be perfect, but clearly there was enough foundation there, morals, values, things of nature, interest, where we could connect. There was enough emotional maturity that I could see within them that was like, okay, they are 
open to being in a relationship that leads to marriage and they're not afraid they know who they are so yeah that was pretty much my experience so tell us a little bit about your love journey okay so my love journey is um I met my first husband I say first right like I've only been married once <laughs> when I was um junior college 18 17, 18, we, we were friends first. We were really good friends. And um, he kept, you know, I was 18, couldn't date. So all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I'm out here. And then I got tied down at 18. So I never really dated. I never really dated, never really dated. And so um, I had, we had our first daughter when I was 22, about to be 23, we got married and I was married for years. We had four beautiful daughters um, well, three, and then I started to file for divorce, um, but I don't believe in divorce. So I thought I was just going to do a separation. So I ended up pregnant with my fourth daughter. I was almost 40 years old pregnant, making $40,000 because I didn't have to work. I was just working for fun. So, um, so that did not work out. It's, you know, it, it was traumatizing. By the time the divorce was done, my divorce, and I say um, seven is a good completion number. It was seven years that we had started the journey. Um, mm -hmm. our, our divorce was finalized 2016. I had started in 2009, the year I got pregnant with my daughter. Wow. So have you been dating since then? What you been doing? So then um, I, my daughters told me I was too involved in their lives. So they put me on a dating app. And um, that was funny because I had the side view picture. I was like, I'm not taking my picture. And they took a side view picture, put me on. And it was fun. I like, I like to meet people. I like to talk to people. So I went out on a few dates. But what I found, Coach Cass, mm. is that if a man takes you out to dinner these days, they think something else is going to go on. Oh, snap. Like your stuff right. is for rent. Just on a, <laughs> on a fake dinner. <laughs> exactly. What, what made this difference? <laughs> say, I am going to post her on my social media. Well, you're right. I am a very private guy. I am not the kind of guy that says, that's posting, here's me and my boo, and we are here, and we're going here, and we're doing this. I'm at this restaurant. I just checked in. That ain't me. I, I really, and I, you know, matter of fact, and for my business, I need to be doing more of that, but I don't do that, and I don't know why. It's just not me, but so, you know, I'm, I, you know, well, I just say, I just say, I just say, mm -hmm. at, at the time of us recording this, in, uh, in, in a few weeks, I'm gonna be 59 years old. Yes, yes, young, yes, young. I got some, I got some miles on me, brother. Got some miles, brother. Got some miles. And so, uh, you know, the older we get, the more discerning we get on who we want to spend our time with mm -hmm. you know when you when you're younger you'll put up with some stuff you know and but the older we get the more it's like you know what i ain't got time for no foolishness no time, no time. and and so and so when you find someone that just hits mm. on this level on this level on this level and we and 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 you know you love each other and then you love being together and then you got these intellectual conversations and you just have fun and you just, it's different, it's different. And so, you know, uh, I, 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 I just figured I'm not the kind of guy that's gonna put it out there, but I'm gonna put this out there. And you know, I, 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 I wanted, I was happy and proud and said, listen, I want the world to know, look, I'm off the market. Mm -hmm. I don't care who, I'm off the market. Wow. I belong to one woman and it's a wonderful thing. So tell us a little bit of, of what love has done to you in your past. What, what has that journey been like? Listen, I'm really, really grown, number one. So you you sure you want to jump into this? You know, like where I've been, what I've done? You know, I got like Girl, come I got on. 60 years up under my belt to tell you some fruit things. So I done been around a few blocks. Oh. Um, 
might have been around a few blocks, but you know, all in all, when you look at it, um, let, let, let me go way back because again, um, just coming from my childhood and being um, from a place where you were never loved because mm -hmm. again, my story goes from horrific to terrific. So we were abused kids. So there was no love in, in the house at all. There was nothing. It was nothing that we went through where it says love. It was like survival, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, my, my father's way of showing love was to hit my mother. So we went through domestic violence situations, generational. So what, you know, I thought was love was the fact that, you know, because this is something that my mom told me that if a man hits you, you know, that's his way of showing that mm -hmm. he loves you and all of that stuff. So you walk into your journey, um, going through life with some of those things and some of those things that happened to me. So when it happened to me, I didn't think anything of it because again, this is something my mother told me that this was love. That was what love was all about. Mm -hmm. Till I learned later on, no, this is not what it's all about. No one, how the hell are you going to be showing me you love me and you beating the hell out of me. So I learned quick and in a hurry and how to get out of those relationships, you know, as I got into each Wait and every a second. one of them. How did you learn to get out of those relationships? Because there's some people that are stuck in that place, right? And they feel like every person will abuse them. And they feel like that's the only thing that relationships look like. So what, what did that epiphany even look like, Candace? How, how did you get there? Well, it wasn't just an epiphany. I realized that I deserved more. I sat mm -hmm. there and know and said, you know what? I was a smart kid. Um, you know, I wasn't a bad kid. I deserve better than this. I don't know how my mom went through this, but in the moment, you know, you're scared. You don't have anything. You're stuck and never mind stuff. You paralyzed. But once you really, really make a decision and you say, I deserve better than this. Mm -hmm. Now it's time to create a plan. See, because a lot of times people will say, why didn't you just go, go where, you know, you're stuck there. You're yeah. paralyzed. So you have to figure out how you're going to get out. I had a daughter at the time. So it's like, how do I get out of this? So I had to pretty much uh, become him um, so he can trust me so I can get a hold of some money. So huh. I stole some money. I did some stuff, putting some money aside. You know, I, I just didn't grab no shopping bag and say I was going. I know right. if I was going to be okay and my daughter was going to be okay because I had already tried some of the women's shelters, the battering shelters, they treat you just as bad as he was. So you're being battered all the way around. Mm -hmm. So you figure you got to have some money. I knew up front that I needed a plan. So I cultivated a plan. Um, so I started being that good girl, like doing everything he said, you know, but in my mind, I was scheming and plotting that I was getting out of there. And, but, but the, believe it or not, Cass, it took me a year. It took me mm -hmm. a year to say, you know what, I'm getting out. But when I got out, I had snuck and went to school. I had got a certificate in respiratory therapy. I had a job lined up for me and I was stealing his money all a while so I can get out. So that's exactly how I got out of there because I deserve more. Mm -hmm. Now, he found out he didn't want me out. You know, he didn't want me to leave. So one last time, he beat the hell out of me mm -hmm. um, to get up out of there. But yeah. see, again, I was already in that mindset. I deserve better. So I'm yeah. going to kill your ass. And that's exactly what I tried to do. You Ooh. know, so I literally ran him over to get out of there. So I really became him. So yeah. again, it, 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 it's something when you think about it, it's like now as you got to fight for your life because he yeah. really was trying to kill me. Yeah. So I got out of the house, got in the car and he ran down and he threw a brick at the car. And I figured, you know, ain't no love loss here. Your kid is in this car. So I'm just going to run your ass over. And that's exactly what I did. So I tried to kill him. And then I ran home to my mother because now the you know, like, what the hell did I just do? I'm going to jail. And as oh, a Dominique, go ahead, share with us, you know, because we're nosy. Uh -huh. A little bit about your <laughs> love journey. Yes. Um, I feel like I've been very lucky. My parents were together for 
43 years before my mom passed away and wow. I've always been like the hopeless romantic. I like, I just love love. I want to be love. I want to find my Prince Charming and um, it just doesn't really happen. I'm just, I'm still waiting. And at mm -hmm. this point in my life, you know, I'm 40 years old and it's like, I've been through it all. And I've had like different phases. I feel like at some point, you know, like when you're 40, I feel dating is so much different than when you're 20. In my yeah. 20, I could go out and I would be like, oh yeah, so how many numbers am I gonna get tonight? Like, I just, I would just be so excited, but like, you know, I would have fun dating. And um, I went through a phase where it's basically, well, you know, like when you're young, I feel like I was attracted to a bad boy, you know, like the guy that's typically super ambitious, driven, successful, very good looking, but kind of self-centered and a little bit of an hey. animal, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. And I don't know exactly what was happening at that point, but like, I feel like maybe I needed some kind of validation. It would be like, oh my gosh, I got to talk to him or he's giving me a little bit of his time. And it'd be like, those guys would be like really busy and it'd be like, oh yeah, like, you know, you should feel very lucky, very privileged. I'm giving you some of my time, but I'm so busy and I'm talking to her and I'm talking to her and I'm talking to her. And in my mind, I would just be, I'd be like, oh my gosh, he's giving me, I, I get a little bit of peace of his time. It's so cool. But, um, you know, went over that phase. Um, that was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And then um, I went through a phase where I, is, I was born and raised in Montreal, right? That's where all my friends and family are. And I feel like dating when you're in uh, a familiar environment is different. At some point mm. you're like, I've seen everybody. I've, you know, like, I feel like everybody know each other. Mm -hmm. I moved to Vancouver and I stayed there for four years and they were like, I didn't understand the dating scene over there. I feel like each city has its own kind of like dating scene and trends and dynamics. And when I was over there, I was, I kid you not, I was celibate for three years. Like mm -hmm. nothing was happening. I Oh, so it through. wasn't on purpose. It was just yeah. like, there's just yeah. nobody. <laughs> like, I feel like I, at, at, at first I was just like, no, let me just, let me just take a little bit of a pause. And then mm -hmm. there was nobody around. Like there's just no one. And I was just like, well, I might as well keep this going. I'm going to wait for my future husband or my next boo or whatever. And then I moved to Toronto and I was just like, okay, that's it. I think I've learned the lesson. I really was trying to like focus on myself. And I feel like when you take sex out of the equation, it mm -hmm. just, you know, like it, it, you see everything. You see yeah. when guys are trying that's, to get in your pants. That's your thought. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, like, you see through a lot of things. You're, you got, you get a clear mind. Like, I feel like, so I like that experience. I learned a lot about myself. And then I was just like, okay, I learned my value. I learned everything. Let's just get back in the market. And it was just like more happening. There are more people in Toronto, obviously, where I am today. Uh, guys would approach me like because like, over there didn't like, it was just it was there it was dry right there's nothing yeah. happening so um yeah I got back into the market and then the latest trend was like my other pattern was like in that later stage of my life was where I kind of attracted men that were dealing with some mental health issues like I had one that had depression and another one that had also depression and was dealing with you know societal thoughts um it was very heavy and this and, is all in Vancouver and this is in Toronto Toronto okay um and it was kind of like heavy and I was just like I was just trying to figure out like what what is going on what is happening with me right yeah. what is so we just want to get a little bit nosy, Donnell. So can you share with us a little bit of your love journey? Sure. I mean, I'm basically an open book, so I have no problem with it with any of this. Um, I am turning 40 in a couple of years, or a couple of years, a couple of months. It's all right. It happens. Um, I've dated off and on for the past, you know what, let's just say past, seven years but I haven't really been serious with anybody mm -hmm. like there's no titles no 
okay, everybody, this is my girlfriend. It's just, okay, hey, there's that girl, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And everything is good. Yeah. Um, the thing is, it's, and I'll be the first person to admit, yes, there was some self-sabotaging on my end. A lot of people have trouble admitting that. But yeah, I, I will admit it. There was some self-sabotaging. But at the same time, I don't think I was mentally emotionally spiritually ready to be in a serious relationship at that time wow so yes. what do you think has shifted now what well, would you say that you're mentally ready i would definitely say i'm mentally ready now mentally physically spiritually emotionally all of that yes so what what changed for you Danelle? honestly me mm. like just the way i've seen life the way i've seen things like i grew up like okay the I don't want to. I don't want to stereotype and say, "Oh, Jamaican men, this, this, and this." But like with my with my cousins' influences, my uncles, everybody living their best life out there. Yeah, I have this girl here and this girl there, and ray, 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 and it's like I wasn't really looking to be okay. I want to do this inside. I wanted to be that person. Like if you meet any of my friends, I'll tell you, "Oh, Donnell, he's gonna be a great dad one day." He's always around the kids. They flock to him. He's the cool, the cool Uncle Donnell and all of that. So yeah. I wanted that, but at the same time, I wasn't really, really ready to accept that into my life. Like I didn't want to have to grow up, so to yeah, speak. Too. So come on, Jay. You know, we kind of nosy <laughs> here on the show. So we want to know a little bit about your love journey. Oh, wow. It's, it's been a long journey. Let me tell you, Cass. Listen, but let me expound on the crown corrector. The crown corrector entails correcting the crowns or putting jewels in other queens crowns right to help them know their value their self-worth who they are what the boundaries are what they will accept what they won't accept who they who, you know being who they are right yes. without apology all right so that's being a, the crown corrector right yes. uh also being uh, uh strong in who you are again knowing your worth and knowing your value so that what entails the crown corrector straightening crowns one time at a, one crown at a time right building the queendom all right so my love journey, I have been unlucky in love, coach. I think, mm. I, think I need help. I think I need help. Yeah, yeah, sad. What thing. happened? What sad had thing. happened? Tell me, girl. Okay. All right. So I was in a committed relationship, right? Just to find out that I was the only one committed. Oh. Right? So I was cheated on. Mm. I mean, the gentleman even had children. And I still was there. I still was there. Yeah, yeah, listen. You stuck through I, all of it. All of that. I still was there. The, the young lady contacted me. She was, she was the mistress. She knew about me. We were living together. And she called me on the phone and I was like, who are you? She was like, well, I have kids from him. Not, not one child, but two children. No. I, I, listen, the room went black. I don't know. I, I mean, I think I passed out temporarily, lost consciousness. So I woke him up because we were asleep. This is like 12 o'clock at night. So I was like, are you kidding me? She was like, no. And I said, how old are they? She said one and three, right? And I was like, are you kidding? Now I had, a, we had a two-year-old. So, so he had a one-year-old from her, a two-year-old from me and a three-year-old from her. Meaning, As the world turns. Meaning he had a child with her before he had a child with me. Oh, so, you know, we're nosy girls. So tell us, tell us a little bit about your love journey. Um, my love journey is a slow one, I guess is the best way to describe it. Um, I've had relationships in the past um, and they just haven't worked out for whatever reason. Timing is usually um what has been the issue either I wasn't ready or they weren't ready and you know during the pandemic this it's the the journey has been on pause <laughs> let's put it that way <laughs> so my journey is slow but I'm I'm very hopeful for uh what's to come yay hopeful so what's your question for me Carrie Ann what, what, what you got brewing so I am a traveler. So I'm a travel uh, speech, medical speech pathologist. So I go from city to city, three months at a time. Uh, if there is an opportunity for me to extend, I'll stay there a little bit longer. So uh, for example, I've been here for about six months in California and I'll be extending for another three. So my question to you is what's your advice for a woman who is a, a mover and a shaker and is going around, how do we, meet people and how would you approach that conversation uh, when that comes up? Because I feel that's always a, a concern for people is, well, you're going to be leaving soon. So, Tanil, 
everything. Please, please, please do share with the audience because we're nosy. Um, tell us a little bit about your love journey. Yeah. So since since y'all nosy and whatnot, I guess I'll just have to give you the tea right now. Um, so you know, my love journey is is one for the books because I am the urban legend. I am mm. somebody who married my ex. <gasps> you married your ex? No way. Yeah, I married my ex, girl. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So okay, so how 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 did that even how did that even happen? Where did you meet? What made you break up? And what what happened? Yeah. So in my 20 something something age, I met this I met him on a Craigslist and I'm like really telling you the you were, look, you were looking for a maintenance man. I was not. I was looking for love, girl, and I found him on Craigslist. Yes, I did. I did. And this is like before the Craigslist killer. Okay. So it's before okay. like, things got shady. This was like yes, mid yes. 2000s Classified. And so um I posted this ad. It sounds so weird. So like I posted this this ad on Craigslist, like you know, women seeking men. And I just shared my story of like, you know, uh, BBW and I want love and I'm quirky and fun and all this stuff. And I actually just wanted a date for Valentine's Day. And he actually ended up messaging me. And he wasn't my style at the time. I was like, you know. Because at the time I was really into white guys. I was like, you know, no, nah, he's he's uh, he's black. And I was like, no, nah, you know. Um, and so we dated. No, no, I'm sorry. So what happened was I was watching Raheem Devon, and this song came on. And then this during time of MySpace, where I went to his MySpace page, and that song was playing. And I was like, oh, there might be something about this guy. I like him. Mm. And that's how it started. So I had to thank Raheem Devon for. <laughs> making me give this guy a chance and so we dated for two years and um it was a rocky relationship he had his own thing um we, we would get back together break up get back together the whole oh, thing no yeah and then we broke up um where i had enough and he started dating somebody else i was single during that four-year period i was actually celibate and I, I know that it sounds really trite to say this, but like, I found myself, I found my relationship with God. I uh, found myself, how I work, uh, loving myself, dating myself. I went to the gym, went to church. I just like enjoyed the things that made me who I am, mm -hmm. helped me feel rooted in who I am. And mm -hmm. somehow uh, I stayed really good friends with a mutual um married couple a, a mutual friend that's, that's married and they invited me to their gender reveal party for their firstborn and so I went and I was like well is he gonna bring his girlfriend you know because I knew he was dating someone and they were like no it's just gonna be him and I went and I he was like hey shocked to see me and we ended up reconnecting I was like no I'm not interested you know we can be friends but I truly when I said that I was I was happy being alone and, and not she said he's just a friend oh baby, baby. you <laughs> you got yeah. what I need <laughs> yeah like it is it's the truth I was like no I, we're just friends like I have no interest in you because of the hurt and how much work I worked I did on myself I just wasn't gonna willing to go down the route Mm. but what happened was mm. I prayed this simple prayer to God actually it wasn't quite it was simple to me in terms of um, its consistency and every day for a year I would drive down this on-ramp to work and I would pray for my husband I would pray for somebody who was confident and strong mm. and somebody who was kind and I prayed over him I prayed over if he's in a relationship, I hope he's learning from this relationship. I hope that he's getting what he needs and he's not broken, God. I hope that mm. whatever whatever he's going through right now, since he's not with me, Lord, that it's a lesson. So when we do get together, I don't have to be his teacher. Mm. And I did it every single day for a year. And I said, God, I want my husband to shout his love for me from the rooftops. Um, Cause my picker is, I know we talked about this, like my picker is a little off. So I'm like, you mm -hmm. know what? Um, I want you to know, let me know that this is my husband. And by doing so, I want him to say, I'm going to marry this girl. So mm. back to the gender reveal party, I told him, no, I don't want to be with you. Da, 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 da. And um, he walked me to my car. And when he went back into the house, he, and this is my husband who's like pragmatic and quiet and just not, 
not the guy who's Mr. Gregarious, okay? He's yeah. the guy who's like in the corner, like, hey, I don't want to talk about this. Um, or I don't talk to you. <laughs> so uh, he said, hey guys, um, that woman that's left that just left right now, that's my wife. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how I knew this, because I uh, our my girlfriend was like, hey, the craziest thing happened. She was trying to get me to, to talk to him again. And I was like, no, 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 no. I was fighting everybody, child. And I was fighting everybody. No, 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 no. And and she said, you know, well, okay, fine. But he said the funniest thing. He said that, that you know, you're his wife. And I was like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Excuse me? <laughs> I said, I said, uh, excuse me? Now. So good, brother. You know, I had to bring you on this show because I know the struggle has been real. And I, I really want to talk from first the male perspective, right? As someone who was looking intentionally for love. I feel like, you know, you have been about this journey and there's so many women that feel like, you know, guys have all the options, you know, and we are only left with a few. So I'd, I'd love to take it back to your single times. <laughs> And what would you say were your main um, experiences or main struggles as a single man really looking for a good quality woman? Mm -hmm. So first of all, hello, everybody. Uh, before I dive into this, please note, these are all of my opinions. And you have to take what I say, not as a maybe an attack or anything, but you have to, you have to self-reflect okay let me, let me write that mm -hmm. so, you don't look for love love finds you okay that's on both sides um because you have to be willing to submit to the process of it all so mm -hmm. if you feel like oh there's not a good person out here for me x y and z it's because you're not committed to your personal goal mm -hmm. of finding love yeah That's not love it now south florida dating scene where is this, this podcast is everywhere it is but we can talk about south florida dating scene well uh, uh, south florida most major metropolitan cities dating scene is trash i'm gonna sit up here and tell you that it's trash i'll tell you why because people's expectations are effed up mm. i'm gonna tell you why why most women especially uh, and I'm probably going to get slaughtered with this, but it's fine. I don't care. I'm married. My wife loves me. <laughs> Whatever. Most women want to come with this traditional sense of dating. Mm. But they, they have expectations of traditional sense of dating. Mm -hmm. But this is my big ass, but they do not bring the traditional sense of dating to the situation. Oh, please do explain, sir. Example. So, um, so you expect a man to pay, open your doors, you know, treat you right, X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. But there's a, also a lovely place called home. A lot of women don't cook. A lot of women don't clean. A lot of women don't pick up after themselves. Mm -hmm. And they starfish in bed when it comes to sex. Mm -hmm. But you, but you still, yes, starfish. You got five limbs in your head, from starfish. Um, but y'all expect these traditional things to happen. Now mm -hmm. that goes both the same way. The same way, you know, you spend, a man needs to provide and and show that he can protect and, and lead and all this other good stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, man's supposed to pay for it all. This twenty, this twenty twenty one stuff done went high. We ain't paying the same prices as our grandparents and parents were. A little bit more expensive. Just everything's a lot more expensive. You know, you can't get a you can't get a, a, a fifteen hundred square foot house for less than th almost almost four hundred grand. Mm -hmm. So get it out your mind. So that that has convoluted and diluted the waters of of what what you're supposed to be. So when I was dating, mm -hmm. I everybody knows I'm a cook. I'm yeah. a chef. Hallelujah. You come into my house, you're getting a five-star meal. Okay. Better than what we go to Morton's or or or, 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 Hawk or whatever for. You mm -hmm. come in here, you come in for a food experience. Yes. Your ass can wash the dishes. Oh. 
You just got fed. Yeah. Just... Hey, ask me for a pair of gloves and, and come help me in the kitchen. See, people, a lot of people don't know how to be a part. And mm. that's where the problem lies. Oh, my goodness. So you listen to the, all 10. Oh, my goodness. All 10 clips. Now go back and listen to the whole episode, girlfriend. Don't miss out on the gems. And remember to subscribe and leave five stars. We need some more reviews on our podcast. So leave a podcast review on Apple Podcasts for me. Going into this new year, we want to make sure that our podcast is reaching the masses, which we've reached to South Africa, Belgium, Germany. Kenya, uh, the UK, uh, all over our country. So I am so excited that you are listening in and watching us here on YouTube as well. So in the meantime, in between time, have a great time and welcome into this wonderful new year. God bless y'all. Bye guys. <laughs>